Hey everybody, Mike with Games Play Badly. And on today's episode of Imperium for Initiates, we're going through Magazine 3. Now Magazine 3 has some additional elements to it. It has some more Space Marines there. And it comes with the Space Marine Blue. So we're going to go ahead and break these apart and put them together. And it should be a lot of fun. The breakdown comes up next. Hey everybody, it's Jeff with Games Played Badly, and I've got episode, or issue three of the Warhammer Imperium magazine. I figured I would open it up and share what I've got a little bit here, and kind of show you all what comes in magazine three. Please pardon the uh, ripping noise. So the first thing we get, uh, uh, the base McCrag Blue. Get rid of that. Uh, looks like we got three bases, along with our sprue of three assault intercessors. Uh, now they do have the Ultramarines logo and the assault infantry badge on their right pauldron. Other than that, they look pretty good. These are the same Marines that you would get in the, uh, the learn how to paint set or the basic paint set for Warhammer 40K. Uh, for ninth edition. Uh, the magazine, of course, as usual, has come pretty well beat up um, and already, as you can see, <laughs> mangled. Uh, my cover is pretty well mangled uh, through the mail. I'm not really impressed the way um, Angora ships these things from Florida. Um, this one came in a black uh, plastic bag um, and was pretty well beat up by the time I got it. Um, scratches on the cover and whatnot. I know it's just a magazine, but as a collector, I'm kind of big into these things. Uh, looking at the first page, it shows us our Assault Intercessors. Uh, two poor squad members have not made it. Obviously, they died. Yep, two casualties suffered, including the loss of their sergeant. <laughs> now three remain. That's an interesting backstory. Uh, same as in the other magazine, where you can uh, name them. And, uh, not name the, the weapons, but at least the, the people. A um, little backstory or some lore on Dark Imperium. Tomb Worlds, not bad. That's pretty cool. I'm looking forward to reading this stuff. I get a kick out of it. The Assault of Drakthir. That's pretty cool. Some intercessors against some of these uh, warriors. I've got a batch of ten of these things painted up or working on it. Along with three of them for Susie that came in Magazine 2. The how-to instructions, which, I mean, they look pretty simple on how to put these together, so that's cool. Uh, and then keeping it clean. So with our first paint, we'll be able to get our lieutenant and then these three assault marines base-coated in McCrag blue. It says to go straight on, or it shows going straight on the plastic, but I'll be base-coating mine or priming them in black. Um, so I won't be going straight on the plastic. That's just something I've kind of been hobbying with uh, for a long time, so I'll keep it like that. Then we've got the uh, playthrough, hold them back. So that looks neat. Looks like you've got three warriors against the one intercessor. Boy, that poor intercessor is gonna go down quick. Or maybe it's, oh, it's all three, okay. So all three intercessors versus these three. I can only imagine how quickly they'll go down. All right, and then in our next issue, we've got the Scorpec Destroyers uh, and the Primaris Captain. So that's pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to this one since this is the magazine exclusive. But, and I will get these Assault Intercessors uh, cut off the sprue and cleaned up and then I'll get these things put together. Okay, so now it comes time for assembly. I got these all cleaned up. I did find that some mold lines, especially on like number two, or little salt intercessor number two, were in some really interesting places. So clean them up can be quite a pain. Um, 
I did leave the pegs on, so I haven't had any issues. I mean, if I do, then I'll take it off, clip a little bit down, and then kind of go from there. So, but I mean, they look pretty straightforward. I am gonna glue these, because these are gonna go in my permanent army, so it'd be nice if they would <laughs> give you your glue and whatnot in the beginning by waiting for, oh, a few of the other, you know, next editions and or um, one thing I do find interesting is it wants you to clip all these off in the instruction manual and you don't have your clippers yet. <laughs> so well, I do find that a little hard to, whoa, sorry about that. I do find that hard to do or to say the least. So, but yeah, I mean, they look pretty straightforward. I've never put these little guys together, but like I said, it looks pretty straightforward. There we go. I heard the click, so I'm good to go. Component number four, the knee. Looks like this slides into place pretty easily. All right, component number five. So yeah, as you can see, I mean, they're pretty easy to put together. And I'm not putting very much glue on, just enough to lock it into place. So, and how do I want this guy? One of these deals, I think, yeah, that'll work. Oh. Should have some music on or something. I guess I can't do that with YouTube, can I? Okay, and as you can see, once they're clipped off and cleaned up, they're fairly easy to put together. And I mean, you don't even need glue, they snap right into each other. So, there we go! Assault Intercessor number one complete. Time to put together number two and flip the page. But yeah, like I was saying earlier, it wants you to uh, use clipper safety uh, and they do not provide the clippers yet. So, I, I'm not sure what you do. I mean, I'm using my trusty Play-Dohs, so. Okay. All right, and as you can see, that took maybe two minutes. Marine number two is done. All right, oops. Marine number one, Marine number two. Play with my little army guys, this is awesome. Okay, Marine number three, okay. So yeah, it was interesting when it was when I was cutting these out, was how they, how the mold lines were, and then on top of that, how they cut the parts out themselves, or uh, you know molded them. So here's Space Marine number three. So we've got one, two, and three. So now we have four models, and the Necron have four models. So that's not too bad. It's pretty cool. Um, but like I was saying, I find it interesting how they. I guess would splice these things, if that's the word to use. Um, I don't think you need to have all these extra parts. I mean, I know they're pretty mono pose in and of themselves. Um, so, I mean, when it came to, you know, adding a knee pad 
uh, adding a leg on this guy. I mean, I don't think that was necessary. I think they could have got away with just, you know, mono posing it, but um, I think it was just in a sense to try to be a little bit more hobby, you know, friendly in a sense with what Games Workshop usually goes by, which is the hobby. So, all right. So those are done. Uh, the next thing I'll end up doing is we'll start and do our, I'll probably get these primed, uh, get the blue base coat on, and um, then we will, along with the lieutenant, and then we will get a playthrough going, Susie and I, um, so we get the Necrons going against these Space Marines. So until the next video, thank you all very much. All right, so um, we are going to paint our Space Marines uh, today, and uh, we have the blue McCraga blue um, I don't normally use it all paints at all um, but uh, I'm going to be using those for them for these obviously um, I know that through the instructions they've talked about thinning out the paints a little bit I'm actually using a wet palette so a wet palette consists of a sponge that's wet and then um, a piece of um, it's a piece of paper basically but uh, it is a special paper that is also wet and so as of when I apply paint here it uh, stays um, a little bit longer on the palette so it doesn't dry out as fast uh, and um, but also it will do some of the thinning for me so I'm not super concerned about that um, I have my water and a little thing here to clean my brush and this is a brush that they sent which is pretty pretty awesome for a starter brush not too bad so i'm just going to go ahead and start painting since i only have this blue to paint with um, i'm just going to be doing all the blue on um, all these marines basically everything is getting painted blue except for their weapons um, and a couple other little bits and even if i do paint the entire thing blue we can go through and uh, i'll paint back over that with whatever color um, make sure the paint is if you're not using a wet palette make sure you are thinning it a bit just because the thicker the paint is, some of these fine details uh, on these figurines uh, are easy to cover up. So we don't want the paint to be too thick. So they've also mentioned um, doing uh, three coats. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I'll see what the uh, uh, what the paint looks like once it gets put onto the miniature. But I've also primed all of these black. So I did that uh, as a matter of... Uh, I do that for everything, basically. Um, helps the paint adhere a little bit better. Um, there are some models where you don't want to prime them, and uh, typically like Reaper Bones miniatures, you don't need to prime. You can paint directly onto those, and the primer actually caused some problems with the paint adherence for some reason. So, But these I did prime, and I would suggest if you want to prime something, um, if you want to go through and prime these, uh, you can use... Um, what am I using? It is... Rustoleum uh, Paint Plus. It's an L L uh, the 2X Ultra Cover. Um, it's a rattle can uh, product. Uh, you can paint on primer if you have that. You can airbrush on if you have it that way. However you want to do it, but I would definitely suggest priming these. So shake the paint up real good. I don't like the pots because <laughs> I'm pretty clumsy and I tend to spill all over the place. And so I'm going to put a little bit on the palette, not much. Boop. That should be more than enough. And let me go ahead and wipe brush that up with my brush. Clean that up. Oh, I already made a mess. Okay, I'm going to close that up so I don't spill it. Alrighty, on to painting. So they have uh, pretty decent instructions on painting these. Uh, I wet my brush just to introduce a little bit more water into this paint. Okay, so that's pretty thin. And uh, just go around and paint as much as you can. Now, I know that I know that some of these elements are going to be different colors. So, for instance, there's a like a filigree on his chest that's going to be gold at some point so i'm not going to paint that it's also pretty fine um, as far as detail goes so i don't want to cover up any of that detail i'm 
Now this is the primary lieutenant. So there's a lot more detail on him. So for instance, his shoulder pads here have some designs on them. So I'm gonna try and be gentle with the paint on those. I can tell by the coverage, I'm probably gonna need to do several coats, but I won't go through all that stuff with you. Just the basics. And I'm probably going to speed up most of this because as fun as it is watching someone paint, it's like watching paint dry. So I'm just using pink bo or, um, pill bottles because uh, I get prescriptions um, to hold these on here but um you can they have fancy dancing handles that you can use too if you have one of those so be very careful about the the eyes or the visor because i just noticed what ends up happening is that visor will just suck up paint and um You'll lose the detail in there. We want to be careful so we keep that detail. Acrylic paint dries pretty quick. Hence the reason why I'm using a, a wet palette. Um, you can make one of these pretty easily. This is a Masterson's uh, wet palette, uh, which works fine. It's a uh, cheap, I think it was like $15 or something through Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, they really do work out really well, especially, you know, in the winter months when you have uh, heat on and the air is real dry, these paints will dry out real fast. And so having a wet palette, I, I recommend. Now, Warhammer miniature painting is a beast of its own. It really is a, it's almost like a, its own separate hobby. It's a completely unique way of painting. Um, the color schemes are pretty well documented. Um, as opposed to what I normally do which is just kind of fantasy miniatures they make up my own color schemes and things like that but and i'm sure you can with warhammer as well uh, and I, I as a matter of fact i know that jeff is going to be doing some some unique stuff for susie's army because susie has her favorite colors so but i am probably the only one who's going to be painting by the book um, I think Sean's following the book pretty closely. Jeff is an accomplished uh, Warhammer painter. He's been doing this for a very long time. So um, I, I lean heavily on him for a lot of this stuff. And I asked him, I said, hey, do you want to do this painting video? And he said, no, you know what? He's like, I want to see you do it because I've done it so much. Um, and that's fine. I don't mind painting. I haven't painted in a while. It's probably been about a year, so it's, it's good to get back at it. I'm probably going to do a second coat, um, but I'm not going to walk you through all that. I'll show you what it looks like once I'm done. I will continue to paint, and you guys can watch if you want to, uh, but it's probably going to be sped up, and uh, I'll get through all these now. So painting the Space Marines was a lot of fun. I haven't painted a miniature in probably over a year and um, had some issues with coverage. So I ended up having to do multiple coats just because I had to thin the paint out with all the detail in the models. You don't want your paint being too thick. 
But uh, here's what they look like. I think they came out okay. Now, I'm going to be using an airbrush in a future video, which will make this a lot faster. Thanks for watching.